Lovely, uh, lovely to meet you. I'm not sure who's here. I'd, I'd love people to turn off the turn on their videos if you want, or um, speak out and let me know that you're here because we we we'd like to have just just a bit of a chat, really. Um, you will have had a bit of information from Eleanor this morning. I'm sure you've heard many presentations already today, so I'll give you a bit of a brief recap, um, and then I really encourage you to ask questions about. Um, you know about our program, about how you apply, about our training, about PhDs in general, anything. Um, I'm to hear from you. So, um, I'll tell you what, I will actually share my screen and put up the slide that Eleanor, uh, this lovely slide that Eleanor made for us this morning. Um, can you still see my face? Do I need to click something? Violence. No, we can still see you. We can still, still see you. Yeah, you. we can still see you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so as a reminder, this is the the slide that Eleanor showed you this morning. So, we are a, a centre for doctoral training, and what that is is a collection of PhD projects, all focused on the same theme. So, our theme is Earth observation and advanced data techniques. So, all of our projects are looking at satellite data to solve environmental problems and using techniques like machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence to really mine this information and, and get as much out of it as possible. We have um, students based at Leeds, which is where I'm based, and, and Edinburgh, which is where Eleanor, who you heard from this morning. There are also people based at British Antarctic Survey and National Oceanography Centre. So there's a range of places you can be based, but there, there are a lot up in Edinburgh. Um, we also have a huge range of topics. So whether you're, um, you know, whether you come from a specific environmental interest or whether you've got, you know, great data skills and are looking for something to apply it to, we have lots of people working on forestry. There's oceanography, atmosphere, um, earthquakes and volcanoes, oceanography, glaciology, crops, and working out, you know, future crop use and, and food security, things like that. So we have a huge range of topics. So if you're, you know, looking for somewhere to apply your data skills, there's, there's a huge range of things to really think about. And um, we're looking to recruit 16 um, PhD students. We'll start advertising projects in October, and then these studentships will start October next year. Um, so if you'd like to hear more about uh, what's required to um, apply or about the interview process, then uh, yeah, speak using your voice or, um, or, or use the chat, we're really happy to answer questions. And um, our reputed students last year came from a big range of backgrounds and we have a lot of maths and physicists as well as geographers with, with a, a broad range of backgrounds. And what's really important as part of our CDT is we, we offer a lot of training. So whereas some PhD um, programs are um, you know not not topic specific, so DTPs, ours we are topic specific, and we offer a lot of bespoke training. So we aim to bring everyone up to speed. Perhaps you um, don't have experience using satellite data, or perhaps people have used satellite data but don't have the programming experience we have a lot of training in the first year and um, to bring everyone up to speed this is a mix of lectures and practical materials and group work and um, yeah breakouts for mini projects and hackathons and to aim to get everyone to know each other and, and get to know this, this group of people you're going to be working with for the next few years and really get everyone up to speed so or something you want to know more about you feel like you don't have the expertise in it we will offer training in it um, so there's a lot in the first year kind of nuts and bolts the practical skills that are going to help you throughout your phd and um, we also offer things in later years so including you know um, eleanor mentioned trips to, to east facilities near oxford um, additionally training on science communication and outreach so if you want to know how to podcast and share your research that's the kind of thing we're, we're really interested in too. And uh, we want to have really strong links to, to industry. So I, I know it's, it can be a difficult decision about whether to do a PhD and kind of choose an academic route or, or, or go into industry. And we really want to make sure that all of our students have really strong ties to health observation companies so that you know, perhaps you want to do a PhD, but you know in the long term academia isn't for you. You've got that kind of um, all of those networks and, and companies who, who you know because you will have met them 
at um, industry symposiums over the years and you know the kind of things that they do and, and where your skills could be really useful so we want to you know give you the skills and the networks to allow you to do whatever you want to do in your future career whether that is academia whether that's going out into industry we, we, we want to help you to, to achieve that and um, so there's some more facts and figures information on the slide about about the stipend we also offer a generous research training program as part of your PhD um, there may be field work involved everyone will go on international conferences so there are there are big ones annually in, in Vienna and um, San Francisco there are ESA European Space Agency um, conferences that pop up they move around they've been in Helsinki and Prague uh, focusing on satellite data and satellite techniques and um, this is all paid for as part of your research training grant. So you have that money allocated to you to enable you to go out and, and um, present your research, to, to learn new things and meet new people as part of your PhD programme. And as well as these strong links to industry, we want all of our students to do a three month placement so that you're really embedded in industry. You get to know a company who maybe you want to work for in the future and you can directly compare your PhD and working in industry to see what you'd like to do in the future. Um, and it also gives you a chance to you know, have a break, a pause from your PhD, work on something different and then, and then come back refreshed uh, to, to finish and, and write up your thesis. So, um, those are the main things I wanted to say. Um, I'd love to hear from anyone who's here what your what your background is and, and if you're thinking about PhD, what, what are questions you have about it or um, about our training or, or anything. I'll, um, I'll stop sharing my screen so I can so I can see if people are here. Would anyone like to come up and have a chat about what they're thinking, what, whether they're thinking, you know, if they're really sure that um, an academic route is what they want to take or whether they're maybe a bit still unsure as to whether they want to go into academia or into industry. Um, if, are they looking for any reassurance um, about why a PhD might be right for them? Any questions at all? For Ruth, this is your opportunity to ask all of the questions that are burning away. Yeah, and, and I should have said as well, so I did my PhD at the University of Leeds. Um, so I came from a background in geology. Um, I used satellite data to look at earthquakes. I worked on inverse problems, Bayesian inversions. I don't know if this is of interest, but you know, I, I've gone through the process and um, part of the week I work as the as this um, sent CDT manager, but part of the week I, I, I do a postdoc, so I continue research. So if you if you you know really want to know what it's really like to do a PhD, ask me. You know I've, I've been there, I've come through it, and um, I'm here to <laughs> to encourage other people to do it. And um, since has really been an opportunity for me, having gone through a PhD, to step back and think what would I have liked in a PhD, and what would have helps me during the time and thinking about my future careers and so when we're thinking about training and, and opportunities we've really got this in mind that you know we want to tailor it to the students and make sure that, that it's the best for you so anyway. we do have a question come in just now from bianca asking um do you offer opportunities for part-time students yeah, absolutely. So we have, um, so one of our students um, starting at the moment is opting to work part time. So they currently work in industry. Um, I think it's quite a small company, um, but they're really keen to maintain working for them and to work part time for us. And it's absolutely a thing that we offer. And, um, you know, we're working with quite small numbers of students. And so we can work really closely with you to work out what's best. So this student who is thinking about part time, their project has got quite a lot of field work aspect and so we're you know having lots of conversations and working out with our training how that would work how it would fit with his field work and, and around his job we absolutely do so yeah for, for whatever reason we really want we really want to support that we also have initiatives like we have um training at the at the beginning but for people who aren't able to attend in person we're, we'll, we'll keep all of the all of the lectures online of course now every university is, is, is doing this every university is used to recording lectures and posting it online but of course you know 
the training we offer can fit around life in general. We also are going to set up a buddy system, so if you can't attend lectures in person, assuming things are in person, you've got a go-to person to ask your questions and maybe it's easier to you know, send them a quick WhatsApp rather than email the lecturer who gave the lecture, etc. So, so yeah, we really support that. Um, if you'd like to chat more, um, drop me an email or you, know, you can apply and, and find out later, but that's something we really support. Great, thanks Ruth. Um, another question I was just going to ask is if you could maybe give us a bit more information about the placements and the placement or internship opportunities for students and the sort of organisations you work with on that. Yeah, um, maybe let me tell you what, I won't share a screen, but let me just um, find the slide as a memory job. So it's a, so it's a real range. It's, uh, it's really exciting the kind of people we've got lined up. So a lot of these companies are either using Earth observation data or would, would like to. So some of our students are going to work for big organisations like the Met Office. So if the students have an um, atmospheric meteorology focus, we've got two students confirmed definitely aligned there. So, so you know, we all know the Met Office. Um, that's a great opportunity to work. Uh, large companies like Unilever, people looking to use yeah, data machine learning skills. We've also got a lot of small startups. So these are sometimes spin-off companies from academics or maybe they're um, new companies that branch off from a larger one. And these are doing a range of things. So either you know, taking free data and processing it, some are looking to launch uh, um, small satellite cl um, clusters. So maybe six new satellites going up and, they're, and, they're, and that's their company remit, this particular you know, cluster of satellites and how they're going to use the data. Um, there's environmental agencies, so you know companies that would like to use uh, satellite data but don't necessarily yet. And again, many are topic specific, so there's some associated with forestry, some associated with marines and fisheries. Um, yeah, there's, there's a full range. So, so, so as well as doing a placement at one of these, you'll also have a chance to, to meet people from all these different companies and you know, find out what it's like working at a large organisation or at a startup. Um, you know, we've got the full range. Okay, thanks. And uh, just a, a more general question I've got is, um, do, because obviously you're just one of many CTTs um, funded through this scheme, is it typical that all of the, do all of the CDTs recruit at the same time? So do they all recruit now for the following year or do they all have kind of staggered starts? Is it worth people looking at the different CDT sites to see when all their application processes are? Yeah, so, so you know, there's two kind of main ways that PhDs are funded and one are CDTs, so Centre for Doctoral Training, the other is DTPs, Doctoral Training Programmes, which, you know, the names are ridiculously similar, but um, CDTs like myself are subject specific. These often have different um, recruitment timetables. They also can be different, so they have to offer training and some do this through a, a master's project and some like us offer training during the PhD. So CDTs are, are, are somewhat different. DTPs, which is generally if you were looking to apply for a PhD um, at a university, this is the main way that you, you go through it. And these, yes, they have a very similar recruitment timetable as us. So where are we? August. So the projects would start going online in October. The deadline for applying is normally just after Christmas. Interviews will be around February. You receive an offer in, in during March. So that's the kind of standard process. I think a lot of people tend to apply um, write their applications even over the Christmas break with, with an application deadline early January. So it's probably a bit early now to be looking about projects, but they might start popping up. But by October, November, there'll be lots of lots of things to look at. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's really helpful. So I think um, from our perspective, it's probably just um, worth mentioning that that the way that CDTs work is very different to the way that when we were talking this morning in the presentation, the knowledge transfer partnerships they can appear at any point in the year, um, as can the industrial doctorate. So the industrial doctorate scheme that we offer um, is university dependent. And what we find is that across the universities, so the universities that have the CDTs in them, all of the CDTs tend to have just one intake of PhD students a year. And it tends to be at the start of each academic year. 
Um, but what we find for the um, just the PhDs that come funded through other schemes and for our industrial doctorates is that they can appear at any point in the year. So some universities will have intakes in only at the start of the academic year. Others will do two intakes a year. And for others, for PhDs, they can be really flexible and they'll take people on board at any point in the year. So it's worth bearing in mind that PhDs can be available at any point in a year. And it's just about keeping an eye on all of the different um, websites to see what's there. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about, there's not any more questions. Does anyone, we've still got five minutes if anyone else has got any further questions. Um, it might be worth just talking a little bit more about how, what you mentioned very briefly, like what a centre for doctoral training is, like how it differs from yeah. other PhDs, what makes it different. Yeah, and I think yeah, just to tack on your point as well about when PhDs pop up, I think a really key thing for us is that we want this to be a real cohort of students. So we are more regimented in, in when we start. So we hope most of our students will start in October. There's a very small amount of flexibility, but essentially most people will start 1st of October. And the nice thing about this is that you'll be a group of people all working on satellite data and whether that's optical or SAR and whether you're looking at oceans or forestry, there's a range of things, but actually the skills that you'll be using will be very similar and there'll be a lot to learn from each other. And the advantage in this is that you'll, you'll have a cohort, you'll have a group of people who um, you'll be able to talk to about, you know, coding problems and how you do this and how you do that. And I really think that the contacts our students make early will benefit you for your whole career because everyone's will be 50 PhD students by the end. Um, everyone's going to go out and whether that be in academia or industry, but you'll, you'll know their names, you'll have worked with them, you'll have gone to the pub with them and done quizzes with them you know, through, through our programme. And so it's really, as well as the benefit of you know, having a PhD and the technical training that we offer, um, you also have this network of people that will really benefit your career. So, you know, whether you want to start up a small company in the future, you'll be able to think, oh, I, I know someone from my from my CDT um, who has those skills. Um, they'd be great. They were great at coding, and, I, and I've got the environmental knowledge and whatever. We yeah, we, we want this this strong group. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the main thing about the CDTs is we're subject specific, and that we offer a lot of training involved. There's often more industrial links as well for for general PhD programs, DCPs, and the it's kind of encouraged. But we we spend a lot of time looking for industrial partners um, to help line up our students because it's it's easy for us. We know we know the the landscape, um, and we can really sell you our PhD students. Industries are really really looking forward to. To meeting you as I'm sure you've got a feeling from that today everyone is keen to recruit you <laughs> brilliantly technically excellent people so um, you know we do a lot of that legwork to provide these companies available um, for you to talk to and, and think about your career and the future connections. <laughs>